Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Last night, you had what I consider to be a great fight between Saul Alvarez and Alfredo Angulo. Right? I thought this was a great fight. I thought I learned a lot from last night. Only time will tell as future fights take place and the fighters go forward with their careers. Now there's a split in public opinion on this fight. Let me just say this. The fight officially ends by 10th round KO. As I like to say here online, as a gambler, I believe KOs cause amnesia. We forget what happened before the KO. This fight is going to be spun in many different directions by supporters of the fighters, as well as by promoters and the media. Right? The question here is, which one is it? Because there are two schools of thought. The first school says that Canelo was just too fast, was just too accurate, was just too explosive with his punches, and that he teed off on Alfredo Angulo for nine rounds, looked great, and then, of course, closed the show in the tenth round. Right? But there's a second school of thought. And it's one you need to think about carefully. Alfredo Angulo, going into this fight, was almost a 5 to 1 underdog. 5 to 1. In other words, this fight was not supposed to be competitive according to the gamblers. Understand, when you're talking about <clears throat> 5 to 1, what that means is that if these guys fought six times, right, the odds makers expected Canelo to win five of the six. So the question here is, and this is the second school of thought, it's actually the one I belong to. How does a five to one underdog make it to the 10th round of a fight against a guy whose calling card is his punching power and then when the fight is stopped how did this 5 to 1 underdog almost 5 to 1 underdog make the fight so competitive that immediately after the stoppage of the fight the crowd boos they boo the stoppage. This is in the 10th round. The crowd thought there was still a chance that the 5 to 1 underdog could win the fight. <clears throat> the crowd thought that the 5 to 1 underdog was still in the fight. This is after what some people are saying was Canelo's best performance in a while for the first nine rounds. <clears throat> so which one is it? Did Canelo look so good that this fight validates the fact that he's back? Is that what happened? Or did Canelo look so uncertain that the people who would know the most, the people in the arena watching the fight as it happened, thought at the time the fight was stopped that his almost 5 to 1 opponent was still in the fight with a chance to win. And let's be clear on the chance to win. Right, that would have involved a knockout. Right, so let's talk about the fight. 
Let me say this. Here's what I believe I learned on the fight. Here are my observations. First, let's talk about right before the fight. I think it's important. Canelo could not make 154. Right? With months to prepare, Canelo could not make 154. How serious was the issue? They paid Angulo a hundred thousand extra dollars. Think about it. To come in at 155, Canelo literally paid six figures. That should be an eye opener. Folks, the guy's in his early 20s. He's not yet 25 years old. You're telling me that this guy is having this kind of problem making weight? Think about it. Right? So, that's the first thing. Right? The second thing that stands out to me is the fact that the crowd boos the stoppage for a reason. What I want you to do as you look at the fight or consider the fight is to look at rounds in which Canelo puts together nice combinations. There's several. Right? Canelo looks explosive at times. He looks like he's the bigger puncher in the fight. He looks like he's the guy who's the more accurate puncher by a wide margin in the fight. Right? His punches are landing. He's looking explosive. But the rounds are three-minute rounds. What I want you to do is to look at the rest of the round. Right? I believe this is what the crowd saw. Alfredo Angulo consistently backing up Canelo against the ropes. That's a theme in this fight. Right? Alfredo Angulo continually is able to get Saul Alvarez up on the ropes. Now let me just say, again, age is important. Don't compare Canelo to 30-something Muhammad Ali. Compare him to early 20-something Cassius Clay slash Muhammad Ali. When you're in your early 20s, and you have a jab. In my opinion, it should be harder than this to get you up on the ropes, especially when you are in the ring with your A game. Right? How is it that Angulo is missing with a lot of punches? Doesn't have the power or accuracy of Saul Alvarez? Isn't putting the punches together as well as Saul Alvarez? but yet is still backing up Saul Alvarez in round after round. Think about it. Right? Some part of the public narrative isn't fitting together. If Saul Alvarez is landing the punches he wants to land and is doing so in spectacular fashion, how's he ending up with his back on the ropes round after round. Let me say this too. Couple of points. First on Angulo. If you went into this fight not knowing that cutting off the ring is a skill that fighters learn, you should certainly know that now. Angulo repeatedly gets Canelo on the ropes and then is unable to keep him there. What's going on with that? Right? Angulo looks as lost as Sonny Liston did in the first Ali fight. It's amazing how when you watch young Mike Tyson, right, guys end up on the ropes and they don't leave the ropes. Right? It's amazing when you watch guys who can cut off the ring how the opponent is on the clock, 
right here Angulo continually has Canelo on the ropes but yet Canelo always has a get out of jail free card what's going on why can't Angulo just do a slide step to the side and make sure that Canelo has nowhere to go when you see Janady Golovkin in fights and you see him against mobile opponents Ishiro right um, excuse me Ishida right mobile opponents it's amazing how these mobile opponents end up on the ropes and that's it right the guy you know if the guy moves he's moving against the ropes Golovkin doesn't look like he's overextending himself, but he's figured out the angle. He knows exactly where he has to be to stop a guy from slipping out. Alfredo Angulo, Alfredo Angulo needs to work on cutting off the ring. That's the first thing. The second thing is... We've seen guys who are comfortable up on the ropes. I'm telling you, an argument can be made. With regard to the rumble in the jungle, Foreman Ali, the rope-a-dope fight, that Ali's winning that fight before the knockdown. As you look at the film, you're going to see Ali winning several rounds with his back up on the ropes while rope-a-doping. Look at Floyd Mayweather. As I like to say, when Victor Ortiz loses it and tries to headbutt Mayweather, where is he? He's leaning up. He's in a corner. He's up on the ropes. He's winning every round, and he's comfortable up on the ropes. Right? Look at Mayweather, Ricky Hatton. Where does Ricky Hatton get hit with the check left hook? It's when Mayweather's leaning up on the ropes. You get Floyd Mayweather up on the ropes, and that creates a question. Who's more comfortable? You with Floyd up on the ropes or Floyd up on the ropes? Here we know Canelo's not comfortable up on the ropes because he continually pivots away from the ropes. That's something you need to consider because Canelo, who can't make the weight at 154, we know that now empirically because he didn't make the weight here. He paid six figures here. Now he wants to go to 160. Right? If he's not comfortable up on the ropes, all I'm saying is what happens if he's fighting a long armed champ at 160 Peter Quillen who has him up on the ropes and who's doling out punishment what happens if he fights Janady Golovkin at 160 he's up on the ropes and finds that he can't get off the ropes right Miguel Cotto got Mayweather up on the ropes are you telling me you don't think Miguel Cotto can get Canelo up on the ropes? Sergio Martinez. This gets even more complicated. Right? Martinez moves in the ring. Let's just say charitably, he moves a lot more than Alfredo Angulo does in the ring. Right? Martinez also is a big time puncher. I know people here online disagree with me. Right? My point to you is simply to look at the Zenzurich fight. Right? My point to you is to simply ask yourself, what caused Paul Williams to be on the canvas? I'll agree that Sergio Martinez has some health concerns. He's had some knee problems. He's had some other problems. Okay, fine. I understand some will say that with his recent surgery, we don't know exactly where he is in terms of physical condition right now. Is he still the same Sergio Martinez that he was pre-surgery? 
But the point is this. He's a master power puncher. Excuse me. He's a master counter puncher who can counter you with power shots. He has much more movement than Alfredo Angulo. He just outmaneuvered Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in a recent fight. Made Chavez Jr. look immobile in the fight. You just saw Floyd Mayweather outmaneuver Saul Alvarez in a championship fight that Mayweather won by a wide margin except on one judge's scorecard. Right? Against a mobile opponent like Sergio Martinez, one division up, does Canelo have the foot speed to keep up? Does Canelo have the defense to keep up? Let's talk about that defense. I believe it goes hand in hand with stamina. You saw in about the seventh round of this fight, in my opinion, Canelo gets so tired that he drops his hands. Folks, don't confuse this with Vitaly Klitschko dropping his hands in the second rounds of fights and using length. Right here, Canelo drops his hands, in my opinion, because he wasn't in shape to keep his hands up for 12 rounds. Right? His defense started falling apart. Everyone has defense the first two rounds of a fight. When they're close to 100%, the key is can your defense be consistent throughout a fight? I would question the consistency of Saul Alvarez's defense. There are rounds where against Alfredo Angulo, Saul Alvarez drops his hands. It's high risk. Keep in mind, this is a guy who isn't able to control distance. Right? Angulo has him backing up and up on the ropes. So this is different than Vitaly Klitschko, where Klitschko's doling out punishment, drops his hands, stands there. Right? Stands there. Guys are throwing and he's just leaning back. Right? This is different than that. Sam Peter against Vitaly Klitschko didn't look like Angulo looked against Canelo. Right? Against Sam Peter, for example. Right? Vitaly Klitschko drops his hands and is hitting him with jabs in the middle of the ring. Right? Vitaly Klitschko, Chris Ariola. Right? Ariola's trying to come forward. Vitaly Klitschko is hitting him. There's an offense to Vitaly Klitschko's defensive leaning. Right? He's hitting him with shots and then he's leaning back. Right? Here, I would say Saul Alvarez, who has his hands up for the first five or six rounds of the fight, drops his hands because he's fatigued. Now, understand. Vitaly Klitschko now is in his late 30s, early 40s, right? For some of the fights I'm talking about, he's in his mid to late 30s. Aren't you concerned that Saul Alvarez is dropping his hands at 23 years of age, right? You tell me, fitness-wise, do you think this guy is ready for Gennady Golovkin Peter Quillen, and others at 160. I have my doubts. Right? I have my doubts. Let me, uh, let me say, too, that this fight has a lot in common with the Frotch Groves fight. I understand people are questioning the stoppage, right? In my opinion, in the last two rounds of this fight, the ninth round and the early part of the tenth round, Angulo is getting hit with flush punches. If you're an Alfredo Angulo fan, you need to be concerned by the dimming of his reflexes. He's not even rolling with the punch. Right now, I'm just here to tell you, 
everyone's a tough guy in their 20s. Right, guys take punches in their 20s. But if you don't have the reflexes to dodge these punches, right, if your strategy is to simply take the punch, you're going to have problems in your 30s. Okay, I thought Tony Weeks did Angulo a favor by stopping this fight. I understand Angulo's corner disagrees, right? I myself believe that Angulo still had a chance to win the fight, right? Canelo, let's just say, didn't leave me convinced in his greatness off this fight. But I'll say this, when a referee sees a guy taking that many flush punches, a referee has a decision to make. Now the reason for the public outcry, in my opinion, has more to do with doubts about Canelo. Let's be blunt. It has more to do with doubts about Canelo than it does whether or not Angulo was taking flush punches. Because you and I know there would be no dispute if we thought Canelo was a supremely conditioned athlete who would be able to continue to land flush punches for the remainder of the fight and who looked like he could close the show. In other words, if Canelo were Vladimir Klitschko and he landed this many power shots in the first nine rounds of a fight, and the tenth round opened, and he landed some more flush power shots, and the ref stepped in and stopped it, we would say, well, this is an appropriate stoppage. Because the other guy was getting hit with too many flush power shots, and we know Vladimir Klitschko can go 12 rounds. We don't have a doubt. This is post the Lehman Brewster fight, right? We don't have a doubt that Vladimir Klitschko's in supreme physical condition. So if he's showing us his A-game offensively and he's continuing to land flush shots in the early part of the 10th round, we aren't going to question the stoppage. But here today, we're questioning the stoppage. And the reason for the questioning is because all of us watched this fight and saw Saul Alvarez land flush shots and then at different parts of the same round, end up with his back against the ropes. Right? Then we also saw him getting tired. We noticed his defense started to deteriorate. His hands start to drop. We also noticed when he got up on the side of the ropes that he didn't look like Ali. That he didn't look like Floyd Mayweather. He didn't exactly look up against the ropes like Bernard Hopkins, right? So it's because we question Canelo and his conditioning that the people watching the fight booed when the fight got stopped in the early part of the 10th round with Canelo fighting an almost 5-1 to one underdog. I believe that's the lesson of this fight. Saul Alvarez has only lost once, and it was to a great fighter. Right? He's taken on, and I'll give him credit for this. Tough competition. People like Miguel Vasquez, who people know I think very highly of. Right? Austin Trout. Floyd Mayweather. Right? Now we have a fight against Angulo. People may remember Canelo at one point wanted to fight James Kirkland. He's certainly a guy taking on all comers. But I'm just here to tell you that some of the people booing in the crowd question whether he could close out a fight like this. And they questioned it after nine rounds of watching him in a fight in which he looked good at times. That should tell you all you need to know. And now he's going to 
move to a division with bigger men, with multiple unbeaten champions. Guys with belts and punches. As I said, you know, look at Janady Golovkin. Look at Golovkin, in fact, against Matthew Macklin. Macklin's by the ropes. How does that fight end, folks? Right? All I'm saying is, isn't Golovkin a more explosive puncher than Alfredo Angulo? What happens when Canelo's in the ring against the guy who isn't an almost 5-1 to one underdog? A guy with better defense than Angulo, which isn't hard, right? Better defense than Angulo. A better punch than Angulo, who can cut off the ring a little bit more creatively than Angulo. What happens? Right? What happens if Canelo can't get off the ropes? Right? Ali would pitch a tent, hold a party, counterpunch you to death. Is that Saul Alvarez? So let's just say this fight's a significant fight. Don't view it as just a bump in the road, to paraphrase Antonio Tarver in a different context. Don't view it as just a bump in the road. View this fight as a very revealing fight. I think Canelo has work to do on his conditioning. I think Canelo has work to do on controlling distance. I think Canelo needs to work on his game when he's up against the ropes. Right? I think Canelo needs to work on his stamina, big time. Alfredo Angulo, let me just say this, he's taken a lot of punishment. The reflexes aren't there. Let me show you a move we didn't see him do enough of. Just raise a hand, right? His attempt to kind of like duck away from punches didn't work that well, right? He's getting hit with left hands then he opens up so much look at the replays he's getting hits with uppercuts right let me also say too canelo in my opinion you didn't see a lot of upper body movement right we're not focused too much on canelo's defense because he was fighting a guy with worse defense than him right his defense becomes an issue at one 60. What's Canelo going to do against Sergio Martinez that Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was unable to do? Right, by the way, Chavez Jr. now is campaigning at 168. Right, Martinez has fought and beaten a bigger lion than Saul Alvarez. Right, don't fool yourself. Chavez Jr. hits awfully hard. Right? I would say Chavez Jr. is much better inside than Canelo. So to the Canelo crowd, and understand, I recognize that Canelo is one of the most popular fighters in the sport with a very passionate fan base. To the Canelo crowd, tell me what I'm getting wrong here in the comment section to this video. Am I being unfair to Canelo? Didn't this fight open up so many further questions about Canelo in a redemption fight? A fight where he's supposed to reestablish his bona fides. Didn't this fight leave so many questions open that the crowd, a Canelo crowd, as they entered the ring, that the crowd booed the stoppage? If Canelo was that convincing, why did the crowd think the fight was still competitive against an almost 5-1 to one underdog in the opening moments of the 10th round? Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, and to the gamblers, let me just say, you were taking care of the prop of both guys to win by KO delivered. Because officially, this was the 10th round stoppage. Thanks for coming by.